חבר'ה, how are you? Good day to today is חמישה עשר באוב, לא יום טוב בישראל חמישה עשר באוב. It's also ערב שבת, נחמו, נחמו. And it's פרשת ואס חנון. So as usual, this פרשה, by the way, ואס חנון, it's from the bombs of the bombs of the bombs. You could say the entire Torah is in פרשת ואס חנון, because it has the פוסק, אנוכי השם מליקך, the first of the Aser Sadibris, which is well known that the entire Torah is in that Posik. And not only that, in that Posik, but in the first word of Anoichi, it's all about Anoichi, Hashem is the only true existence. And then not only that, in the first letter. So we'll talk about one thing today, which is, I think, very, very fundamental in Judaism. And even though I didn't see it anywhere uh, clearly explained, but I think based upon what we've learned in Hasidus and in general, it's really pretty obvious. So we'll start off with one of the psukim of this week's parsha, which is actually a prayer that we say on Shabbos and Yantav when we open up the Oren, before we open up the Oren, to take out the Torah. And we say it in Simchas Torah, it's one of the most famous psukim. Which is translated, you have been shown to know that Hashem, He is the God. There is none beside Him. So, the simple meaning of the verse is, Meisha Rabbeinu is addressing the Bnei Yisrael and he's telling the Yidin that we were shown. As Rashi says, Haresa kitargumoi, as Targum Unkelis renders it, is chazesa. You have been shown. Kishonosna Kodesh Baruch Hu Torah. When Hashem gave the Torah, Pasach Lem Shiver Akim, He opened seven heavens for the Yidden. Hashem Shekores El Yoinim, just as He parted the higher realms, Kach Kores Atachtoinim, so did He part the lower realms. V'Rosh Hu Yichidi, and they saw that He is unique. L'Kach Nemar, this is why it says At Horeisa Lodas. You have been shown to know God revealed Himself in such a way. That he revealed his existence throughout the creation. So, straight away on one level, this is the basis of Judaism, as is well known from the Kuzari and the Rambam, This is one of the most basic elementary questions about Judaism and why is Judaism different than all the other religions. Everyone knows this, we're not going to elaborate on this. That every other religion started with one single person who says, I had a dream. He had a dream. He had a vision, and someone revealed himself to him. God revealed himself to him. And then he convinced 10 disciples, 12 disciples, 15 disciples, whatever the story is, how many disciples. And then those disciples were convinced that he had the dream, and then they convinced more disciples. That's in every other religion. But what's Judaism? This Pasik tells us how Judaism is different. Ato hore soladas. You... And he addresses every single Jew in a personal, uh, not atem, but ata. You, every single person experienced it personally. Every Jew personally experienced the revelation. Why? Because what happened by Sinai? The Sinai experience was that everyone at the same time saw God. Not only did everyone at the same time see God, Everyone at the same time saw God in such a way that he felt that God was speaking to him alone. And in this way, Judaism is unique. No other religion claims <laughs> such an event. And obviously because it seems so outlandish, so outrageous. But in Judaism, the Pesach says, Moshe tells every single one of us, personally, Ata, you! Horeisa was shown, had the revelation, experienced the personal revelation, one to one, God to you. And you addressed personally, Elikecha, Asher Yitzisicha. And that's why Judaism is different. And no other religion makes such a claim. And then this was passed on from generation to generation without any opposition, without any resistance. In other words, without getting into the whole story now, the way the Kuzri speaks about what's called truth an event which is witnessed by more people at the same time, etc., when you have witnesses. So this event was witnessed by a couple of millions of people at the same time, and this was passed on from generation to generation. That's the simple meaning of the verse. 
Moshe is talking to the Yidden, and he tells every single Jew, after you, referring to the Jewish people, Horesa was shown to know that God is God. You can also say, is the when Rashi says, Veroshi Yechidi, it's a remez to teach us the, the main point of Hasidus, which is not only that God is the only God, but He's the only existence. You could say that that's Baremez, what Rashi means when it says, Veroshi Yechidi, they sort of use unique, not only these one, his unique means there's no other sort of existence like Hashem because he's the only existence. Okay, we'll leave it for now. Now, the Alter Rebbe, the first Chabad Rebbe, gave a different interpretation to these words. And his interpretation is brought down like Siddhis Chabad. And I don't remember anywhere where it's discussed at length the difference between the simple interpretation and what the, the innovation of the Alter Rebbe was. But first let me tell you what it's written. The Alter Rebbe came along and said, Ato du atzmus ein soif. What is the meaning of the verse? Ato. It doesn't go on the Jewish people. It's a statement about what happened at Sinai. What happened at Sinai? Like there's a third person who's speaking and he says, What happened at Sinai? Ato du atzmus ein soif. Which means the you goes on the essence of God. Ata du atzmus ein seif, the very essence of God. Hasech bavizin, you revealed yourself. That's why Matan Torah is called the revelation, because God beard Himself in His very essence, whatever that means. Ata du atzmus ein seif hasech bavizin lo das as mizol dichvisin ki avayu elikim einoid movade. You revealed yourself in your essence so that we should come to know you that Avaya Velikim, that Hashem Hu Elikim, which that's really also the totality of Chassidus and Pnimius HaTorah, Havaya Velikim Kulochad, which we don't have the scope of this talk to explain what that means at length. Einoid Milvadoi. So if someone just hears these words from the Alter Rebbe, he thinks that maybe. What's the difference in Alter Rebbe? Why did he have to come along and say, "Ata do atzmos ain't safe, hatzich bavizin"? So maybe, 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 maybe on a simple, simple level, we'll say one level of interpretation more simply, but then we'll take it to a whole different level, which I believe is also very important. One simple difference is we could say that Chassidus talks very much about the difference between milmaila lamata and milmata lamaila. There's God; He's revealing Himself. And then there's a way we have to reach God from ourselves. There's Mumayla Lamata as God reaches out to man. And then there's Mumata Lamayla as man reaches out to God. It's a two-way street, a two-way relationship. You could say sometimes in a marriage, the husband has to initiate warm feelings and positivity and affection. And sometimes you say the wife has to initiate warm feelings and affection. Sometimes Mumayla Lamata, sometimes Mumata Lamayla. So maybe if it looked like that, we could say that the posse is Moshe Rabbeinu talking to the Yidin, telling them, Ata Harei Soladas, you were shown. Guys, be happy. Judaism is completely different than the other religion. Let's appreciate it. And therefore, because Ata Harei Soladas, you were shown such a high revelation. Hashem revealed himself personally to every single one of us. So that's a call for us to now rise to the occasion. You understand? Kimayim Aponim Aponim, can live a lot of them. As God reaches out to us and revealed Himself, and He didn't allow Judaism to be like other religions, where it starts with so-called a claim of a person who says, "I had a dream that God revealed Himself to only one person." Here, He revealed Himself to the entire nation. Therefore, it behooves and it's appropriate to the entire nation to respond, so to speak, in kind, to show our affection, to show our love. So, therefore, according to the simple meaning, Moshe Rabbeinu is giving us a call. God revealed himself to us. And that means that we should now respond in kind and, and, and internalize it, absorb it, ladas, etc. And the Alter Rebbe is coming along and saying that it started from God. We have to remember that point, the stressing what God did to us, where it started from. Everything starts from my Lamata, that He allowed it to happen. Because He invested His essence into us, 
So therefore, he allowed it to happen that we should also come to know him. So the Alter Rebbe is talking about Maila Lamata, we could say. And Moshe Rabbeinu is talking about Mata Lamaila. Okay. Maybe that could be one shot. And by the way, this also goes together with a very famous interpretation of the Rebbe, which is brought up many times in the Rebbe's Memorim, about the Pasuk, V'nikla kveid avayer v'ro kol basar. And the Rebbe repeats this in a couple of places, that the Pasuk is telling us two things, because you can ask a question. Once it says, V'nikla kveid avayer, that God revealed himself in all his glory, why does it have to say v'ro kol basar? That all the flesh saw, isn't it obvious? Once we say V'nikla kveid avayer, we see already, we should know already, the outcome and the result automatically, subsequently, the Rebbe says, I'm ready to give shahat. No. V'nigla kveida vaya is talking about mamayu lamata. God revealed himself. It makes it possible that it should be the continuation. But the main point is, an act of God? That's not such a great chidush. God can do anything. And in this case, v'nigla kveida vaya. He decided to reveal himself. But what's the real chidush? What's the real thing? The real thing is, v'ro kolbasar. That the flesh, the physical flesh, becomes so refined, becomes so worked on, becomes so elevated that we that this revelation, this appreciation of spirituality and godliness permeates even the flesh. So again, similar idea. Similar to what the Alter Rebbe says, after do We're talking about an act of God. Is an act of man, how, which is the real main point, that yalu, that we work on ourselves and change and transform ourselves, and we enter into a relationship with God, the deepest, intimate sort of relationship. Okay, so that's one way we could look at what the Alter Rebbe came along by telling us that the meaning of the verse atas means do atmos ain't safe. But I think maybe we could say another thing. And maybe this thing, what I'm going to say now, in my humble opinion, is the secret of Judaism. The absolute secret of Judaism, if we want to get to the very core, the point of the totality of Judaism, which subsequently is the totality of the Kabbalah, Kabbalah, Pnimi Satira, and Chsidos, the inner point of the inner point of the inner point. And that is, for lack of a better word, we'll call it Toiras etzem, the doctrine of essence. And that is really the secret, the number one principle that Chassidus Chabad stresses and elaborates on and revealed like no other school of thought. Toiras etzem, this concept of essence. Now, what's this concept of essence? This concept of essence <laughs> itself. We should make a series, a series of lectures called The Doctrine of Essence in the, the, in the, in the Torah of the Alter Rebbe. And that itself could be a lecture series for 20 weeks, at each lecture for an hour. What is the, the, contra, the doctrine of essence? The doctrine of essence is that there's an essence from whence all comes from and everything is created and evolved. And that it's in the power of essence, the fusion of so-called seemingly opposites. So we have the doctrine of etem, essence. What does that equal? The power of noise hafochem to fuse opposites, to unite opposites, which really to show that it's not, no such a thing as really, really opposites. Let's talk very, very general. We have a God. That's the essence. Out of God comes like two channels, let's say. He decided to make two channels, two rays, two programs. Male, female, positive, negative. Light, dark, zo, malchus. Gvul, bligvul, miracle, nature, call whatever you want. Fire, water. As soon as God decided to make creations, in a way, you could say, the point of all of everything was to show how first we have things coming down in two modes, 
And then the ultimate is going to be to prove and to show that there isn't two at all. It's really one. Sometimes there's a concept of three. And this is the way the Kabbalah explains the shame, yichud, kuchibrichu, shchinte. Everyone knows that, especially those of the Hasidic persuasion. They say it before every mitzvah, We say it before Baruch Shamar, but the Rebbe says it applies for the whole day for everything we do. What is the whole of Judaism? Which is the same idea. The whole purpose of everything is to unite the infinite with the finite. What's called in Kabbalah the Seyvev Kalamim with the Mamale Kalamim. We're going to show how a person's infinite powers his etzam nefesh, the very essence of his soul, which is a spark of divinity in its purest form, undiluted, infinity, then permeates things that are finite, and at the same time that they're finite, we still see them suffused and permeated with the infinite. And that's the story of Judaism. That's the story of L'shem Yichud, Kutche B'lichu is the higher level, Oshchinte is the lower level, that's the story of what's going to happen when Mashiach comes. We're going to see how this very, very world, which is called Tachtoinim, the lowest form of existence, is going to be a Dido Lois Borich. The very essence of God is going to be revealed in the physical. And we'll see how the physical is not a contradiction to the spiritual, but actually all fused into one. There's an Atzmos. There's an essence of God who... Physical is not further from him than spiritual. Spiritual is not closer to him than physical. But they're actually both one and the same. It seems like it came out to be two things. The spirit and the flesh. Really, ultimately, ultimately, they're all one. And that's the story of Matan Torah. It starts then, which is called Bittal Akzera. I just told you guys the story of Judaism. From the first moment of Matan Torah, the decree, the division, the separation of higher, lower, spiritual, physical, spirit, flesh, was broken, that division is broken, and little by little, year by year, as we've been a nation, going through all our different journeys for thousands of years, it's really this concept, as it evolves deeper, greater, more powerful, until we come to the end, when Mashiach comes, this whole concept, what I'm talking about, will be totally revealed. See chapter 36 of the Holy Tanya, where what I just told you now is brought out very clearly. Now let's get back to the Alter Rebbe and the Alter Rebbe's interpretation. And I think it could be appreciated in an incomparable way, an unparalleled way. You know, sometimes I think about the Torah of what the Alter Rebbe revealed to us, and I want to dance from joy what did the world know before the Alter Rebbe revealed all these things? Now let's go back to the Alter Rebbe's words. You, the idea of the essence of Hashem, revealed Himself. Here we could say maybe the Alter Rebbe is teaching us. That what makes it possible? Atmos, this doctrine of etzem, the source of all, the essence of all. Atmos, when we have the essence of God and the essence is revealed, then it makes it possible that we should have knowledge, even in something that shouldn't be understood because it's infinite. But again, once we have the essence, then we can have understanding in something which is not really possible to understand. We can't get into all the explanations right now, but that's the way it is. Since there are no limits and everything is really one. So just like if I would tell you right now, is there any scientist in the world that could say fire and water can go together? No. And the answer is, because, to the, because according, to the laws of phili- according to the laws of physics, and according to the laws of science, and according to certain laws of existence, it's impossible for fire and water to exist in the same space. But what I'm trying to tell you, for the Hebrews, it's not a problem. Very simple. There is actually the same source of fire and water. That means in a certain plane of existence, they're not really different at all. They come from the same source. 
Really, really, if we did whatever it's called, I don't know what you'd say in science, we broke it down, broke it down to the elements deeper, 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 and we got to the Amitis Yimatsai, Nimtu, Kolonim, Toyim, and it all comes from Atmos, we see how it's the same. And where do we see this clearly? In one of the ten makas. I think it was borrowed. And Rashi says of the Nes Mitoich Nes, that it was balls of, 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 of hail, ice, and fire. And Rashi says of the Nes Mitoich Nes was that it was the fire and the ice at the same time, at the same thing, etc. So we see that for the Abish, it's just not a problem at all. Why? Ultimately, because fire and water are not opposites. The fact that they're opposites is because it created according to a certain level of rules in a certain space. Like we said before, in a certain plane of existence, they are opposites. And according to, if we look at it with the naked physical eyes, we would see all the properties and dimensions and aspects of fire, which are opposite, the total polar opposite of all the elements, dimensions, and aspects of water. But guess what? There's an essence from whence they both were created, that in that essence, it's really one. Now, this concept, the doctrine of etzim, is really, really also the whole secret behind Chassidus Chabad, and the Alter Rebbe in particular. The Alter Rebbe pushed very much that we should understand. His school of thought was Chochma Bina Das. We're called Chabad Chassidim. There were other great masters of Chassidism, other disciples of the Magid, that felt that the stress, the emphasis should be more on pure faith. We'll leave the, the academics and the studying of the mystics and the and, and deep mysteries of creation and infinity and finite to the, to the holier, loftier, elevated people. But the masses should just believe in the tzaddik. All you have to do is believe in the tzaddik and that's it. You'll fly on their coattails, uh, whatever you call it. No problem. Dalton ever said no. He made a new system, a new path. Number one, I believe he saw the future. He saw the future that we're going to have this society and world which is more stressing individuality and independence and free thinking. All those industrial revolutions and, and the French Revolution, the American Revolution, this whole idea of individuality was emerging and the real truth of God is meant to permeate even man's sense of so-called individuality, free thinking, and independence. We're talking, I know, I know, we're talking about very huge subjects now. Like I said, it's not the scope of this talk to to Fanem Fernalo Shilas Mizokt, but this is the idea. And then, therefore, the Alter Rebbe came along and said, the age of just accepting and faith is not enough. That's the foundation. That's what the Jewish nation is all about. But even our faith was different than all of the nations because by us it was Ataharesa Lodas. As we said, the first interpretation, the simple meaning. Judaism is different than all the other religions because we first all saw it. So that level of certainty that comes from sight. But then Chassidus Chabad comes along and says there's even a level of our faith which is even greater than seeing is believing. That's because God is in us. He is our essence. Talking about essence, essence to essence. But then we come to another point in this verse itself. According to the Alter Rebbe and all the successive leaders of Chabad, in the Chabad doctrine, the real Ein Eid Mulvadai, the concept of Achlus Avaya, that there's none else but him, means... Not that the Nigla Kveda Vaya is stressed, that God is very powerful. He's all powerful. And he superimposes his revelation, his being over creations. <laughs> he floods us with the revelation, and therefore we accept it. If that would be the case, that we're overwhelmed by his rays, and we're overwhelmed by his presence, and we're overwhelmed by his powers. Then it's not the true idea of Einoid Milvadoi. Einoid Milvadoi, there's none other but him means that every single nook and cranny of existence, every particle of reality has to scream Einoid Milvadoi. Not because something overpowered him, not because he was dr- over drowned, not because he was overwhelmed, but he's screaming it 
from within. And that's really what happened at the moment of Sinai, without going into it right now. So therefore, the, the Alter Rebbe, when he comes along and he says that idea of Ato du Asmo Sein Seif, Hatzak Bavizn Ladas, Menzol Zich I want to say that over here he means to say the way of Chabad. Because this essence, essence allows Chabad intellect, which is limited and finite, and a reflection of mortals, that itself could grasp and become united and suffused with infinity. Why? Because of Atmos, because of the doctrine of essence. And by the way, that means Kiavai Elikim. Havai Elikim is also the idea of opposites. Havai represents God as an infinity. Elikim represents his finite. And what's the whole point? Einoid Milvadoi. Yanko, Beryl, Shmerel, Yehuda, Naftali. Everybody has to scream, Einid Mavade. Why? Not because my father told me to say Einid Mavade. Not because I believe Einid Mavade. Because it also came down on my intellect. My intellect is also permeated. And that's the true revelation of Mashiach. The Ebushu should help that the lesson we should take from this Shabbos is to Mamish Kochzich in this Pasach of Atore Solodas. Work with our Chachma and our Bina and our Das. More and more, every single day, our knowledge of God, our appreciation of God, should be richer than it was yesterday. And tomorrow, it should even be a greater treasure by each and every single one of us. We should cherish it, talk about it, live it. And if we prepare ourselves in such a way every single day, by becoming more and more intimate with Hashem, through our Chochmah, Bina and Das, we'll come to the day where we'll see the full revelation of Einoid Milvadoi Megula Mitzvah Shlema Take it from a yad Mamesh It should be Shabbos Nachamu Nachamu Right now The Gula Mitzvah Shlema Benheira Viameinu Mamesh Posting from my home Be'ezusha Mizbarech Your man in Melbourne